Good morning, my dear friends. In our previous episodes, we said that Jesus, the high priest, offered his body and blood as the greatest and the most perfect sacrifice in order to lead humankind back to the Father. That we commemorate in the liturgy of the Eucharist. This morning, we will revisit the part of the Mass where we receive the sacramental body and blood of Christ. We call it Holy Communion. So come and join us. Let us enrich our knowledge of the Holy Mass, the source and summit of Christian life. After we express our thanksgiving, it is now time to give the offerings of bread and wine to the faithful through the communion rite. Following the great consecratory prayer of the Church, the Eucharistic prayer is the prayer that Jesus Himself taught us, the Lord's Prayer or the Our Father. Our local church uses the 1970 ecumenical version as approved by the bishops in 1976. It is followed by the sign of peace, where we share with our brothers and sisters the grace and peace that we receive during the celebration of the Mass. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our Unlike the previous edition of the Roman Missal, that gives three options in inviting the assembly to the Lord's Prayer, the new edition of the Roman Missal gives only one. Come Advent 2012, we will hear the priest presider inviting us this way. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Whenever we ask the Father, before we receive the Holy Communion, to give us today our daily bread, we pray to be nourished with the bread of life and to be transformed into what we eat, into Christ Himself, that we may be able to follow His commandment of loving God above all and loving our neighbors as our own. Also, we pray the Lord's Prayer in the very words of Jesus as taught to His apostles and disciples to beg for God's forgiveness that we may learn to forgive too. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. The Lord's Prayer is expanded by the embolism which was added to the Roman liturgy by Pope Gregory I as an urgent petition of deliverance of the city of Rome from barbaric invasions. In this context, it is easy to understand why it prays for deliverance from evil, the coming of peace, and safety from distress. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. This is followed by the doxology, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever, which is apparently the earliest addition to the Lord's Prayer by Christians. After the Lord's Prayer is the sign of peace. In the Roman Mass, the sign of peace has been in place since the 5th century. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. After asking the Father for the grace that we need for the day and giving out to our brothers and sisters the peace that we receive from Christ, it is now time for us to express the gravity of the communion rite through the singing or the recitation of the Lamb of God. Also in this particular rite, we humble ourselves before we receive the Lamb of God, who is Jesus. We follow the example of the pagan centurion who said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Of 
The Lamb of God, or Annus Dei in Latin, is a chant that originated from Syria, the home of Pope Sergius I. It has been in the Roman Mass since his pontificate in 701. This chant is taken from the first chapter of the Gospel of John. In the said chapter, the prophet, John the Baptist, refers to Jesus as the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. In Jewish tradition, the lamb is a sacrificial offering that has to be broken or killed, offered, and eaten. According to our faith, Jesus is the sacrificial lamb, unblemished and pure, who was broken in Mount Calvary, offered to the Father in atonement of our sins, and eaten by His faithful in the Holy Communion. Thus, the chant is sung or recited by the assembly during the rite of breaking of the sacramental bread and the commingling performed on the altar. Upon breaking the sacramental bread, the priest then drops a small portion of it into the chalice. This indicates that the Mass being celebrated is celebrated in union with the Pope and those in union with him. At present, a short prayer is said by the presiding priest during the commingling. Who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit. After the singing of the Lamb of God and the commingling, the presiding priest prepares himself with a prayer recited softly before he raises up and shows the assembly the broken host over the chalice. He then invites the assembly to receive the Lord. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. In the 1973 translation of the Roman Missal, the assembly said in reply, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. In the new translation, the assembly will reply with an adaptation of the words of the pagan centurion who asked Jesus for the healing of his servant. The adapted formula replaces the word servant with soul but kept other pertinent parts of the centurion's words. Although some would think that the story of the pagan centurion has nothing to do with the Holy Communion, his attitude in receiving Jesus explains itself. His humility, coupled with faith, sets the example to those who are to receive the Holy Communion. Following the invitation to communion is the communion procession. It is the fourth procession within the Mass, and as with the others, it is accompanied by a communion chant. The priest then takes the paten or ciborium and approaches the communicants. The faithful is not permitted to take the consecrated bread or the sacred chalice by themselves, still less to hand them to one another. The communion minister, be it an ordained or lay minister, shows the host, or sometimes the host and the chalice, to the communicant. The minister will say, the body of Christ, or in other occasion, the body and blood of Christ, if both the Eucharistic bread and wine are given in the Holy Communion. Then the communicant replies with, Amen. The people may receive the Holy Communion either by the hand or by the mouth.
After receiving the Holy Communion, one must show reverence to the altar, rendering it a deep bow before he returns to his seat for personal prayer. The present liturgical norms no longer require a genuflection and a sign of the cross. When all have received the Holy Communion, the rite concludes with a prayer after Communion. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. My brothers and sisters, we hope that we have given you a simple understanding of the liturgy of the Eucharist. Now that we have learned so much about it, may we be able to render it with rightful reverence, for in this part of the Mass, we commemorate and witness the great sacrifice of Christ, the Lamb of God. We are almost through revisiting the Holy Mass. Join us again next Sunday as we take up the concluding rites of the Mass. Till our next meeting, may the good Lord bless us all.